Hello and welcome to Rathod Science Academy. Today in this session we are going to see current affairs of 28th October 2024. So let's get started with our discussion and there are many articles which are there in our newspaper today from your examination point of view. Without wasting any time let us see those articles. Okay see this article guys. Title says quarter to investments up 42.5 percentage capex recovers says data. So what is the keyword here? Keyword is investment and second keyword is capex. Okay. So first keyword is investment. Second keyword is capex. Capex is nothing but capital expenditure. Okay. So from which subject point of view will be seeing this article? So investment you will be seeing under GS paper 3 under economy and even capex also from your economy point of view. So what are the dimensions you have to see? You have to see about what is investment and we have different types of investments. For example, private investment, foreign investments. In foreign investments again we have FPI and FII and you have to see what are the advantages of getting investments and you have to see the present scenario why there is decreasing of investment in our country and how this decreasing of investment in our country is affecting economic growth of a country. So all these are the different dimensions that you have to see after this class. Okay. So now let us see what exactly the article is saying. Article is saying that there is increasing of fresh investments in India. So especially 42.5 percentage of increasing of investments that we see in our country. Okay, so especially Maharashtra, which had highest number of projects, which attracted more investment, especially private sector investments, they are growing at a very slower rate in our country. Okay, so here this article is saying that, yes, especially Maharashtra is going to get highest number of projects and even there is increasing of investments in this Maharashtra. Why? Because recent elections had been done and there is removal of moral code of conduct because of this now it is attracting more number of investments. So if you see the keywords that you have to remember the first important point is government capex recovery. So now there is increasing of capital expenditure of the government. So whenever we are getting more amount of investments obviously we can increase our capital expenditure and we can build more infrastructure and development projects in our country. So this is the thing which mainly said and especially because of lifting of election code also we are getting more investments and we are focusing on this capital expenditure. So whenever we are focusing on infrastructure development and investments obviously it will lead to the increasing of economic growth of a country. And next one here is now we can see there is a very slow private sector investment because of here especially the un economic conditions of our country. So there is no proper economic recovery and there is high volatility which is seen in our economic system. So because of this what happened there is very less attracting of private investment which is happening. So here if you want to increase this private sector investment in, the, in this capital expenditure or in our country or in our economy obviously we have to provide a proper business environment for this private sector and so that we can increase investment in our country. And next important thing here is if you see all the states in our country, Maharashtra is showing dominance. So Maharashtra committed for the attract uh, more amount of investments that we are getting in our country because whenever any investment wherever they are investing in our country they are seeing about infrastructure, whether they are going to get the proper returns or not. Okay, so here especially Maharashtra have the good robust infrastructure. So because of this, it is attracting more amount of investment. So that can be followed in any other state where they are focusing on attracting of more investment. And next important point here is now even there is a problem of sectoral shifts as well. So especially the performance of some sectors like manufacturing and infrastructure, they are booming while mining is declining. 
that means even wherever the investment where they are doing they are also focusing on in which sector they have to focus so if you are investing on this mining is it sustainable will you get the returns throughout no so even nowadays countries are focusing on on especially environment climate change etc so mining is one is such a sector that yes there will be obviously the impact on economy and as plus well environment as well so we can get a dilemma between economy and environment if you are investing in this mining so because of this the infrastructure is declining in this mining and other sectors like manufacturing and infrastructure sectors there is increasing of investments and next even there is there is momentum which is seen in this mega projects as well so especially there is increasing of mega projects that is big big projects and which is also growing investor confidence and also willingness of the investors to commit to the large scale initiatives and especially when we are coming up with this mega projects that will obviously lead to the long term economic growth and whenever we are having this long term projects it will also leads to the creation of employment as well there will be increasing of job opportunities and as well as we can ensure the development in different sectors so these are the points that you have to remember and apart from this you have to see what are the advantages of increasing of investment so how the future economic growth can be ensured because of attracting of investment in this quarter too okay so that, those are the very important points that you have to focus and see this article air pollution in delhi spikes to 10 times over who limit so what is the article is talking about air pollution in delhi and it is talking about whatever the data or the whatever the limits are given by who so there is more than 10 times air pollution is seen in delhi so here what you have to focus exactly what are the limits of who which is given and what are the present limits that you are having in delhi region so that is the point that you have to focus okay so this article is about air pollution in delhi okay so here you have to see what is air pollution and you have to see examples of pollutants in air and here you know like nitrogen oxide sulfur oxide ozone or any other gases so what those gases will be having the impact why they are calling as pollutants like in which area they will be having their impact for example nitrogen oxide will be having impact on your lungs okay like that which examples of this pollutants and their impacts so from this area also you can get a prelims based question do this work guys and next one here is you have to see double ho ho limits so on this double ho ho limits also you may get a prelims based question and next one here is what are the measures need to be taken to control this air pollution and here you have to see what are the schemes or policies especially by delhi government so what are the steps taken by the delhi government to control this pollution in delhi and this is also star mark you have to make a list of schemes or policies came up by the delhi government okay so this is your work and finally there is also a chance of getting case study regarding this topic for example if you are a minister who is responsible for maintaining or like if you are a board member of cpcb then what are the steps that you will be taking to control air pollution in delhi so they will give you a scenario so whatever the who limits they gave so uh, we cross that limits like more than 10 to 15 times in delhi so if you are a member of that so and so coming to take to take care of air pollution in delhi so what are the options you are having so what will be the uh, course of your action or else they may ask what measures can be taken to control this air pollution in delhi so in this way also you can get a case study from your ethics point of view so you have to see this because this topic belongs to your environmental ethics topic okay so what is this article is talking about exactly air pollution in delhi has increased over 10 times compared to the who's safe limits 
So here PM 2.5 had been reached 160 micrograms per meter cube. So it is very, very high. And the situation may worsen during this Diwali. So we are going to have this Diwali festival soon, right? In the next week or probably in this week. Yes, so here what happens whenever you are celebrating this Diwali? Diwali, it is nothing but a festival of lights. But now we made it is a festival of crackers. So because of this, what happens? Obviously, there is increasing of pollutants into the atmosphere. So what is the alternative? Alternative here is we can use green crackers. So write down the question. So uh, different types of, write down the different types of green crackers. Different types of green crackers. And what are the chemicals used in this green crackers? What are the chemicals changed or alternatives? So here, actually in 2022, there was a question regarding this green crackers in your films. And they asked about which kind of materials are responsible for which kind of lights. So whenever you are you're burning these crackers, sometimes the crackers will be giving pink color, red color, green color, blue color. So there are certain kind of chemicals that are responsible for these colors. So you have to see which chemical leads to which color. And in green crackers, what we are changing. Okay, you have to see that. And next important point you have to see here is health impacts. So whenever we are having the prolonged exposure to this PM 2.5, that will lead to severe respiratory and cardiovascular diseases. So because of this, we have to take some urgent steps to control this PM 2.5, which is very high in Delhina. And next important point you have to focus is ineffectiveness of firecracker ban. So actually, many a times, Delhi government will be taking the step of banning of firecrackers, especially during this Diwali and as well as during this January 1st. So normally, these are the festivals or these are the events that we will be celebrating in winter season. So obviously, whenever we are going for this burning of crackers in winter season, there will be increasing of pollution and increasing of fog formation, everything. So here always government will be taking this step of banning of firecrackers. But even though there will be ineffective banning of firecracker will lead to further increasing of pollution in this region. So we need proper stronger regulation and as well as we need proper public awareness campaigns as well. And next important point here is seasonal pattern. So actually in winter season there is increasing of pollution. And even because of stubble burning in Punjab and Haryana is also one important reason that will lead to the bad air quality management. And this one here is, yes, we are having a very poor air quality index, which says that, yes, we have some immediate health risk to vulnerable populations. For example, elderly people and people who are having some respiratory disorders, people who are having this cardio cardiovascular as lung and as well as even heart disease. So they are very vulnerable to this air pollution. And next one here is, yes, we need to even take care of the meteorology and its role as well. Because weather conditions plays a very significant role in even pollution dispersal. So here meteorology, need, that is Indian Meteorological Department, it, it need to give proper early warnings regarding to how these winds are moving, so how it is impacting the air quality as well. And this article is saying that, yes, we need to take some urgent steps to control this or else what happens? So we will be facing lots of consequences. So this article is saying that we can use some advancements or technology to control this air pollution. So write down this. So we can use some innovative solutions like anti-smog guns. We can use anti-smog guns to combat this rising pollution levels effectively. Okay. So write down one more question. So what are the innovations or science and how we can use science and technology to control air pollution in Delhi. So how we can use science and technology to control air pollution in Delhi. So what are the work I'm giving? So please do this work. It will be very useful for you guys to write a very efficient answer. Okay. So next one here is what are the features of WHO guidelines? What WHO said? So guidelines recommended new air quality levels to protect health of people and even they are focusing on especially reducing this level of key pollutants in air. And we have to address this problem of climate change. And whatever the guidelines are given by this WHO, it is not legally binding. 
so it is one important problem and if you see the levels which are given here is about pm 2.5 that is particulate matter 2.5 so the upper limit of this annual pm 2.5 as per 2005 standards is 10 micrograms per cubic meter and now if you see it is around 160 micrograms per cubic meter so how much high it is and this one is 24 Howard ceiling is 25 micrograms but now it had been dropped to 15 okay per day it should be maximum like 15 only but it is now 160 and pm 10 that is particulate matter 10 is the upper limit is 20 micrograms okay so you have to remember that thing and per day that is 24 hours yes the maximum can be 45 micrograms so this is about limit of pm 2.5 and pm 10 and see this article sri lankan navy arrests 12 fishermen from nagapattinam so actually every time there will be fisherman issue between india and which countries sri lanka and pakistan okay so here you have to see what are the reasons behind this fisherman issue between india sri lanka and india pakistan so try to make a notes of this case in one a4 sheet Keep heading fisherman issue and divide this page into two parts. Write India Sri Lanka on one side, India Pakistan on one side, and write about what is issue. Okay, and write about what is the issue and why there is frequent arrest. why there is frequent arrest of fishermen between this India and Sri Lanka and India and Pakistan and write about what are the measures can be taken and you can add a note on what are the agreements between these countries you can write about what are the agreements what are the agreements and you have to see conflict regions conflict regions between India and Sri Lanka or India and Pakistan and next you can give your way forward. So if you are getting any issue or any article regarding this fisherman issue between these countries you can open this page and you can refer this. So you will be having entire content in a single page. Okay so in this way whenever we are having the issues between India and other countries so try to make this comparative thing so that will be very easy for you guys. Okay, see this next article. India's Nature Conservation Index rank 176. So write down this, it is very important. Okay, it is talking about India's ranking in Nature Conservation Index. <laughs> and India's ranking here, see very bad, 176 out of 180. From last, it is fifth rank, not from top. From bottom, it is fifth rank. So India's Nature Conservation Index rank, 176 out of 180. And this topic is important from GS paper 3 under Environment and Ecology. So if you are writing any answer regarding how India is performing in conservation of our biodiversity or environment, you have to add this article or for sure this, this data. And Whenever you are writing any way forward also, you can write this data and you can say that India is performing bad. So India needs to take some steps to bring its rank better. Okay, so if you see the context, it says that India has been ranked 176 out of 180 countries in Nature Conservation Index. And actually this is very important because for the first time this index is released. Okay, because there is a very high chance of getting question regarding this index. Okay, so here you can get a prelims question in your 2025 for sure. So India's rank is 176 out of 180 countries in first ever nature conservation index. And India's score is 45.5 for 100 points. And last five countries are Okay, Micronesia, Iraq, Turkey, Kiribati and India. 
So these are the bottom five countries: Kiribati, Turkey, Iraq, and Micronesia. Okay, so this Nature Conservation Index launched in October 2024, and Keith Starmer can write this point. Developed by Goldman, Sony Field School of Sustainability and Climate Change, and BioDB.com. So these are the organization they together release this index. And on what basis they give? What are the indicators? They focus on four important areas. Those four are the first one is land management. Second one is biodiversity threat, and third one is governance, and fourth one is future trends. On these four main areas, they gave this report and write this. So here they may uh, give a question like recent, recently Nature Conservation Index is in use. Which organization released that? So this is the first type of question you can get, or else they can give the statement based question. Consider the following statements regarding Nature Conservation Fund. So India's ranking, they may change the number. They will say like 170 or 140 or 130 like that. And next one here is there is also one more question which is possible like so which of the following countries are bottom five countries? So Kiribati, Turkey, Iraq, and Micronesia. And they may ask you like which of the areas are the main indicators of this index? And there they may ask you these four indices. So in this way, you can expect any way the questions on this topic, and you have to be prepared. Okay. So what are the challenges which are faced by India in this index? Is first one is land management. So India is facing very high rate of land conversion for urban areas, industrial areas, and agriculture use. Okay. So recently, you can also add this uh, that is naval base in forest area. So around 3,000 hectares of land from the forest area is awarded to that naval base. So here, whatever the land we are having, so we are changing that land use. Okay, we are giving that land for either industries or urban areas or agriculture use, etc. And even in our land, we are using very high amount of pesticides. And even now, the soil health is at risk. And there is no proper management of nitrogen. So whenever we are using the high amount of pesticide, that will cause us nitrogen pollution. So even in the sustainable nitrogen index, also India is performing very bad. So this is the one important challenge that we are facing. And second important problem is marine conservation. Only 0.2 percentage of India's national waterways they are protected, and especially. And nothing is going, or nothing is going, or nothing. No steps of you are taking in this exclusive economic zone. And on land, only 7.5 percentage of our land we are protecting. So there is no proper conservation as well. This data is very important. And this one is habitat loss. So there is significant habitat loss which is happening in India, and there is fragmentation is happening. So especially agricultural land is divided into very very small bits because of law of inheritance. And actually, we are also losing huge amount of tree cover. So whenever we are going for any project, developmental project, for example, highway project, so you can see this Hyderabad to Bijapur highway project which had been approved. So in that project, more than thirty thousand trees they are going to be cleared off. So what happened? The tree cover will be reduced. So this is also one important problem that we are seeing in our country. And this one is there is declining of biodiversity. So forty percentage of marine animals. And 65 percentage of terrestrial species, which are living in the protected areas, so their their population is declining substantially. So about 67.5 percentage of marine and 69, 6, 46.9 percent of terrestrial species, they are affecting because of loss of biodiversity. And even you can write about the examples of animal species which is declining day by day. For example, in yesterday's class, we discussed about DDT use also led to decreasing of bird population in India. And you can write about decreasing of uh, this great Indian busted animal, birds, right? So like that, and even you can write about vulture population had been decreased more than 90 percent. Okay, like that, you can give some substantial data as well. And India is also struggling with achieving this sustainable development goal 14. It is talking about life below water, and even sustainable development goal 15, that is life on land. So because of this, we need to have proper Marine and terrestrial biodiversity protection. So this is about this article and this very very important article for day. And what are the future trends which are given by this report? 
So this report is saying that India's high population density and urban sprawl and because of this there is threat to biodiversity and ecological balance and even there is very huge amount of illegal trade of animals is happening in India. So can you give me some, uh, some examples of animal which is highly in use which is illegally traded to different countries? Poaching, rhinos, uh, next, elephant tusk, uh, next, pangolins for their scales. Okay, so you can write those examples. So actually India is the fourth largest country in the globe which is having illegal wildlife trade and this trade is around 15 billion euros annually. Okay, so what is the way forward? What can be done? We have to focus on improving of conservation and we have to enhance political commitment. So without political will, we can't do anything, right? And we have to focus on stricter enforcement of environmental laws and even we have to focus on funding for these projects and even we have to focus on increasing of our monitoring on this conservation projects. So can you tell me some conservation projects came up by our government of India? Huh? Yeah, conservation programs, schemes, or projects, project cheetah, project uh, tiger, project elephant, project rhino and even project vulture. Okay, like that we have to come up with more number of conservation projects regarding the animals where their number is decreasing drastically. Okay. And even we have to focus on addressing those challenges so that we can work towards sustainable, ecologically sound future. Okay, see this article, India to procure 15 more C-295 transport aircrafts from Airbus. So this article is important from your science and technology. Just make a list of procurement of our different equipments, at least last six to eight months of time, because there is increasing of our expenditure in defense is growing drastically. So there may be a main question like, so in which areas our defense expenditure is increasing and which kind of equipments we are buying? So you may get question in this area also. We can't take any chance. So try to make a note of this C-95 transport air, aircraft that we are going to procure. And you have to see from which country we are going to procure and what are the advancements or what are the applications of that so-and-so equipment. So make a list like this. So name of that defense equipment from country we are getting and what are the applications of that. So keep one page, one A4 size sheet in your uh, this current affairs notes and whenever you are getting any article go back to the page and fill this. And even whenever you are going through this any monthly magazine or weekly magazine or anything, so if you are getting this procurement related articles, so try to make a list of this. So here you may get a question like, so they may give equipment and they will give country and they will ask you to find which is the correct pair. Or they may give equipment and they will give applications. In this way also they may ask a match the following question based on identifying of correct pair or incorrect pair. Okay, so don't miss anything. And see this article, new rocket plus moon and Venus missions Herald new beginnings. So what is this article talking about guys? Any idea? Any idea? So from which topic it is important? Which subject? Science and technology? Okay. So actually this article is talking about very important thing. So we are going to have NGLV, next generation launch vehicle. So this is very important. And there is also a high chance of getting question on this. So what is this next generation launch vehicle, which is seen in news? Okay, so here you have to see what is this next generation launch vehicle and you have to see what are the applications of this next generation launch vehicle and you have to see in which missions we are going to use this. Okay, and in which missions we are going to use this. It is very, very important. Okay, let us see this in clear. So four missions under this Gaganyan program and four to test technologies for, uh, for an Indian space station have been approved. So recently from the government of India, four missions under this Gaganyan program and to test four other technologies, we got an approval. So under this, we got approval for this testing of 
new generation launch vehicle. So because of this, this is the news. And cabinet approved ISRO's development of next generation launch vehicle. And for this project, government allotted around 8,240 crore rupees. It is a very, very huge amount which had been approved for this next generation launch vehicle. So whenever government is approving this much huge amount under a single project, yes, it is important for our country, right? So because of this, you have to know what are the applications. If you are having this kind of new generation technology, then how India can be moving effort uh, forward when you are comparing with that of other countries with which we are having a race. For example, Russia, China and USA. Okay, because these are the four countries which are running in this new space era, right? So why we are investing so much in this space equipments? Because we have to be forward. So you have to see what are the ad advantages or applications of that next generation launch vehicle. Okay, so approval which had been granted for a mission to Venus and even next Chandrayaan mission also, that is Chandrayaan 4. So I said, like in our earlier classes, we studied that, yes, we are going to have even Chandrayaan 4 mission. So for this Chandrayaan 4 mission and the mission to Venus also, we got some approval from this cabinet. Okay, now the focus that you have to make on this NGLV, that is next generation launch vehicle. So whenever we are having this next generation launch vehicle, so it will be having three times the present payload capacity. So whatever the payloads that we are taking now by using this PSLV or GSLV, so compared to that, we will be having three times of more payload capacity if you are having this kind of new technology. So whenever we are having more payload capacity, what will be the advantage? We can take many other satellites. Yes? Yes or no? Okay. So next one here is, we can also have reusability capacity as well. That means as of now, uh, whatever the rockets we are launching, so they will be taking, they will be using only once. They will be not used for another time. So if you are having this reusability, then after launching one mission, so it will be coming back to there. And again, we can use the same equipment for the launching of another missions. So what happens, the, the, uh, the finance that we are spending, the money we are spending for the launches will be obviously reduced. So it will be financially viable for our government of India. And this one is we are also focusing on modular green propulsion systems. So as you all know that whenever we are using this launch vehicles, obviously it will be causing a lot of damage to our climate, right? Clim uh, environment damage because of they will be releasing more and more amount of pollutants. So here in this technology, we are focusing on green propulsion system so that we can decrease this emissions from this launching vehicles. And especially when we are having this advanced technology, so we can have the maximum payload capacity of 30 tons to low Earth orbit. So find out, so what is the maximum capacity of India for this low Earth orbit now? So if you're having this generation uh, technology, it is saying that we are going to carry 30 tons. And what is the advantage or significance? It will enable India and commercial missions, including launch of human space flight missions to Bharati Antarik Station. So we are going to have our own space station, right? So when it is going to be 2028 to 2035. So by this time, if you are having this kind of technology, it will be very easy for conducting of human spite missions and as well as to reach this in a space station. And this one is lunar or interplanetary ex uh, exploration mission is also, is also very, very easy, especially we can go for observation satellite constellations to the low Earth orbit and it will be helpful for entire space ecosystem in the country. So actually what is the payload now if you are having this new generation that is 30, 30 tons to low Earth orbit. That means we can carry many space or many satellites to this low Earth orbits. So that what happened, it will be very helpful for satellite constellations and it will be also very helpful for a country so that we can launch at a time many satellites. And this one is it will be also helpful for boosting of India's space ecosystem in terms of capability. So we will be competitive to now other countries. Okay. And even the capacity of our launch vehicles can be increased if you're having this kind of advanced technology. Okay. See this article. Beyond intoxication, batting for state, Supreme Court holds federal balance on regulating alcohol. So recently we studied about one judgment of Supreme Court said that 
industrial alcohol is under the iron of states now it is not under the center so industrial alcohol is nothing but uh, which will be used for only industrial purpose it is not at all useful for drinking purpose only for cleaning only for making of paints etc they will be using it is not at all fit for drinking purpose okay so now you have to know about especially the case name where the supreme court gave this judgment so because of this i add this content so write down or note down this case name state of up versus ms lalta prasad vaish case so in this case supreme court said that intoxicating liquor which comes under entry 8 of state list of 7th schedule of indian constitution okay in that intoxicating liquor even industrial alcohol is also part of so earlier because of this judgment of supreme court recently which had been overturned 1990 this judgment so in that 1990 the case was synthetics chemicals limited versus state of up case so in that case supreme court said that intoxicating liquor which refers to only portable alcohol and state they cannot ta tax this industrial alcohol so in 1990 supreme court itself in the synthetics chemicals versus state of up judgment it said it come this industrial alcohol which comes under arena of center but not state but now the present judgment said that no no it does not comes in a center list it comes in a state list under entry 8 now states have the power regarding this industrial alcohol it is not the state it is not the center thing so if you see the background regarding this industrial alcohol so currently union that is central government is regulating industrial alcohol under industries development and regulation act of 1951 so our central government said that in this law why it made this law because it said from entry 52 entry 50 uh, entry 52 and entry 33 in our union list says about this industrial alcohol so because of this we made this act and we are controlling this industrial alcohol as of now but state says that industrial alcohol can be misused to produce consumable alcohol illegally sometimes as industrial alcohol which is not fit for making um, fit for drinking or that but even sometimes there is misuse of law and they are making it to consumable so what happened because of this now it is the it is under the state government it have to regulate whatever the thing which is comes under the drinking of alcohol so that is the argument which made and finally supreme court gave the judgment in favor of state so now it comes under the purview of the state so what is industrial alcohol it is one of the major type of alcohol other than which is used for consumption so usable alcohol predominantly refers to ethyl alcohol or ethanol which is intended for human consumption so for human consumption whatever the alcohol you are taking that is called as ethyl alcohol other than ethyl alcohol which comes under this industrial alcohol that means which becomes unfit for drinking and so what are the examples of industrial alcohol we have isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol if you are consuming this denatured alcohol immediately within fraction of seconds you will lose your sight that much powerful it is okay so because of this it is unfit for drinking by adding any substance so if you are adding anything in that it will become very poisonous uh, or like you will be getting unpleasant smell or taste if you are adding anything in that okay so see this article the private sector holds the key to india's e bus push so what is the scheme regarding e bus or electric bus in india pm e drive right so just see about what is a pm e drive program i think you already wrote question regarding that as well i think so is yes or no main question on this pm e drive okay so you have to see what is a pm e drive scheme about what are the important features under which ministry is coming under so what are the advantages what are the disadvantages and what are the challenges that is more than enough and and already wrote answer on that so that i am not taking this for discussion today and say this sustainability science for fmcgs so we discussed about this nrf fund anusandhan national research foundation so do you remember this anusandhan national research foundation i think one week ago we discussed this in our class 
how many of you recall that article ah very good memory so actually this fund is nothing but focusing on research and development and this article is saying that how this fund is helpful for bio e3 so what is this bio e3 policy about e3 ah e one e for economy economy employment so how this fund will leads to this bio e3 guys is there any connection or relation so whenever we are focusing on research and development obviously we can focus on sustainability in our environment so whenever we are focusing on the research and development obviously we can create employment opportunities and whenever we are focusing on development environment and employment obviously it will leads to sustainable economy as well so here this article is saying that anrf is very helpful to achieve this bio e3 and today's main question i will be giving on this topic okay so after this class go to this article once and try to write your answer okay see this article why is delhi's air quality is deteriorating so again the same article so actually this article is saying that with the withdrawal of this southwest monsoon now here we are going to have this retreating monsoons and now because of this stable burning which is going on in this punjab and haryana region now we can see like very poor air quality in delhi region so especially farmers in punjab and haryana they are burning stubble after harvesting to quickly clear their fields for the winter wheat sowing so this practice is linked to the air deterioration of this air quality index in delhi region and other source of pollution is nothing but inorganic aerosols and using of vehicles increasing of vehicular emissions and as well as uh, there is no proper using of public transport and there is increasing of private vehicles use so because of this there is increasing of air quality uh, poor air quality and next one here is addressing of this air pollution delhi requires a coordinated action among the multiple states as a pollution sources often originate beyond the city borders apart from the city so even we are having uh, other sources which are beyond the city like stubble burning etc so we need to have a coordinated action from the multiple states which are which are bounding this delhi region so that they can get some solution for this air pollution in this delhi region right so these are the some important articles that are very this is very important article and even this anrf article is very important and we discussed in our earlier class and you know about this pm drive so apart from the articles that i gave the notes i gave around 5 to 6 articles i think so so there are more than 10 to 11 articles in today's newspaper which are relevant so try to go through these articles once this class is done and try to make the notes and i am and i am also giving like how the question will be coming in your examination as well so try to think in multiple dimensions guys okay so just don't read what is there in the article it is not at all useful try to think beyond okay so these are the important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so by this i'm concluding thank you so much guys for watching and uh, please do like this class if you really like this class and do subscribe to rathore science academy and thank you so much and we are going to meet at the same time tomorrow